Right, okay, hello. Today we're going to make um, beer from kit, from a beer kit. Uh, to do it, all we need is just a few basic ingredients. We have, we have, a, I have a bucket with a hole in it for the airlock. I have, have a second bucket here that I use for sanitizing, for using the whole sanitizing solution. Jug, 2 litre jug, sanitizing solution, and um, hydrometer, a small flask. Then we have a thermometer, your airlock, that's the bung. We have a measuring thing, a wee measuring cup, a, sp a spatula, a small piece of tin foil, and most importantly, the beer kit. Well, instructions. A small bag of priming sugar, brewing sugar, yeast, filter. A, that's your malt and there is actually two of these the two malt extracts okay so the first step is to get these into hot water and get them softened we take our malt and place the malt into the saucepan side by side and take the boiling water and pour it over the top of the malt. Let that sit for 15 minutes or so and uh, that softens the malt on the inside and leaves it easier to pour. We take the sanitizing solution and 7.5 ml straight into the bucket and I put 5 litres of water in with the 7.5 ml of sanitizer. That gives a good concentration. Okay, so then it goes. Get the jug sanitized. Finish with that. Take a clean cloth. I keep a cloth in there as well. And give your hands a good washing as well with it. You know, get everything in there. Yeah, I should mention need a pair of scissors as well. Okay, so the kettle is just boiled here. I've washed everything. Tin foil, even a wee bit of tin foil, has been dipped in sanitizing solution. I'm going to take the flask. I need 150 millimetres of water. Take the tin foil, cover the top, that seals it off. Yeah, and let that sit. Bring that back down to room temperature. I'll be adding my yeast to that water later on. Okay, so I've just I've poured the sanitizing solution into the bucket here. Um, this is the brewing bucket. And let's give this a good rub down and make sure that that's sanitizing a solution gets absolutely everywhere. You want to make sure it touches every surface. Get the lid, squeeze the lid down in there, get it fully submerged. Give it a good going over as well. So we'll transfer our solution back to here. Until I'm ready, put, put the lid on. The airlock, just to show you, it's not much there at the bottom, maybe that, a bit the way it is there exactly. And that's more than enough solution in the airlock. The airlock allows um, carbon dioxide, during the fermentation process, allows carbon dioxide to escape. There's bubbling there, a little bit like that. But it doesn't let nothing back in again. So, that's a bucket ready. I can just let it sit down until the malt is ready for being poured in. Okay, this is my, this is my fermentation chamber. Um, basically just a fridge that I've adopted. There's room in there for two brews. This is the, th that's the thermometer. So it's temperature controlled. And down below here at the bottom, you see I have a, have a heating bulb. Okay. Now, I need to turn, turn this on. And I need to set it. I want to set it to 21 degrees. Boom. Okay, so just I'll reposition this just to make sure. Yeah, it's fine, it's up the top. So that can be heating up while at the minute it's sitting on about 13 degrees. It's not going to take it that long to get to 21. Okay, it's been about 15 minutes or so from I put the malt into the, the saucepan here. Water's still reasonably warmish, but the malt on the inside hopefully should be nice and soft that it should flow out. So we shall just pour that straight into the bucket. 
basically just dextrose or glucose but you can use normal table sugar just as well let's open our malt let's pour this in okay so we pour out as much as what we can and we take one liter of water pour it into the pouch oven gloves and squeeze this carefully and hold it and let the water melt extract is left in the pouch see how clean it's coming it takes a couple of minutes of doing this just to get to get it all and pour that to the same with the second pouch okay so i've just finished pouring in the second uh, packet of extract nice and clean and just in case you don't believe me second portion was nice and clean as well okay take the spoon and Give it a bit of a mix. The sugar in the bottom needs to be all dissolving. Make sure that there's no sugar lumps or anything. Get that all nice and stirred up. I need to check the temperature of my water. I need this down 20 degrees up below would be ideal. And at the minute, you see that? 21.1. Take a packet of yeast into the sanitizer and open up the yeast cut it with the scissors and let's pour the yeast into the flask careful not to spill any and pop your lid back on pull it down make sure it goes all the way around hand the bottom hand the top Give that a bit of a shake. We'll then let that sit for 15 minutes. That rehydrates the yeast and gets it going. Okay, the yeast is hydrated and I've moved the bucket up onto uh, the, the sink here for filling with water. This is called, this is Wort, W-O-R-T. And this time it's cold water. This kit is for 40 pints or 23 litres. Okay, so just start filling up then. I'll fill this up till about 20 litres, take a temperature reading, see where it's sitting and decide whether or not I need to add hot water or can I continue with cold water. Okay, I have 20 uh, litres from ready in the bucket. Going to take the thermometer, check the temperature. Temperature at the minute is sitting at, perfect, at 20 degrees, 20.4. So, burn in mind I still have 3 litres of water to add to that, it's going to be cold. By the time so I'm going to add... That's 250 mils of hot water. Doesn't come much better than that. That is perfect. Okay, so next up, I need to take a hydrometer reading. Yeah, 1046. Satisfied. Okay, so and the yeast is ready. Bit of a shake. Pop off the tin foil, get rid of that, and we give that a bit of us. And because it is already been sanitized, it can go straight on. Make sure it's clicked in the whole way around. Your beer is now in, in the fermentation chamber. I have the temperature probe taped on here and the airlocks and all's in, so the brew sits there. I'll leave it for th about three weeks or so. Um, you can transfer it to secondary fermentation after a couple of weeks or whatever, and I don't personally. And the reason I don't is because I find that yeast clears up better after itself if you leave it for about three weeks and just transfer it to a second bucket for bottling at that stage. And you, I find I get a clearer brew for doing that. You can see the temperature we said earlier on, it, that'll come up now and match the beer and it, it'll eventually it'll go to 21 and that'll sit, that'll control as the, if the beer's too hot, the fridge will kick on and, and cool down. If the beer's too cold, the heater kicks on and, and it'll heat it up again. So the, that temperature control, I have it set to about a one degree tolerance. So, uh, and that's the temperature that I'll, I'll ferment that is 21 degrees. So the airlock is bubbling away nicely and you can see the crowsing on top. So there's fermentation going on there. So we'll leave this now. We're satisfied that it started and it's going. 
and we'll leave this now. Give it a, we'll get, as I said, we'll leave it for about three weeks. This is now day two. Okay, right, it's been three weeks since we put the brew on, and I've done what they call cold crashing. Cold crashing is where you drop the temperature as quick as you can from your fermentation temperature, which I set to 21 degrees, down to, I set it to minus half a degree. So you can see it's, it's hovering in around just bit freezing there, so we're just below freezing. Um, so the, the brew, the reason we do that, that takes all remaining yeast and sediment, anything else that's floating about in your beer, cold crash sinks it all to the bottom. So whenever you transfer that there for bottling, it keeps your beer nice and clear, or it helps it be as clear as possible. Okay, so the first thing I done was I took the beer out of the, out of the fermentation chamber. It's sitting down on the table, ready for bottling. The reason I take that out first is in case any stuff gets uh, stirred up in the transfer, is that it gives it a wee bit of time while I'm doing the sanitation and stuff of buckets and bottling buckets, and uh, everything else that I need. It gives it just a wee bit of time to settle down. Okay, I... Uh... The, the while the beer's in the house settling down I'm going to turn the temperature up to have the temperature climbing in the fermentation so as I, I want to put that back up to 21 there you go there's the heater on so that that'll heat up now from just above freezing up till um 21 and I'll take hopefully not take that long to do yeah just one other thing I forgot to say in the last video was the kid I'm doing this time here is the the festival whole beers it's the New Zealand Pilsner and it should be in and around 5%. I won't know for sure exactly what it'll be until I take a final hydrometer reading. And that is pretty much one of the last things you do. So it keeps the other most surprised at the very end. Okay, I'm putting the top on the, the this is my bottling bucket. You see it's the top set to close. And always put the rubber to the outside of the bucket. And that's the back the back valve. This bit here will screw on. You see this is facing the bottom of the bucket, which allows you to get as much of the beer out as possible whenever it comes to your bottle. Okay, just finished rinsing out the, bo the bottling bucket here and empty it. Turn the tap on. Run about a half a litre or so through the tap, that gets everything flowing out. Make sure it's all nice and sanitised. Okay, everything's all sanitised. I've uh, boiled a drop of water here, you can hear the kettle's just finished. Put the lid, I have a lid here for the bucket. No, no hole in this one for, for an airlock. This is a bottling bucket, don't need a hole in it. Um, I put a lid on that, keeps it all sealed. Everything's all closed up, there's nothing nasty going to get back in there again. That bucket can sit for it until I'm ready for it now. Is I'm going to pour the sugar into the flask first. Then I'm going to pour the water on top of it. And as long as the water, I think it's over 83 degrees, it'll kill any nasties that's in, that might be lurking in the sugar. So it's just because I pour the sugar in, That's the sugar in. I'm going to put roughly, I'm going to, I'll tell it all dissolves really, but I'd always just try and pour a bit of boiling water around the top of the flask, just to, if there was anything there that it's going to kill it off for me. And I would start with about roughly about 150 ml or so and see what that does. I just want enough water to dissolve the dextrose, nothing more. So I'm just going to, I'm going to cover the top of it now with a bit of tin foil. Just to so we can let that sit there for a few minutes until I'm ready for it. And uh, I'm going to go now and proceed to building up the transfer hose and get ready to transfer the brew from the fermentation bucket into the bottling bucket. At this stage we're going to see what the beer is like. It's usually at this point too that you find out that you have no infection on it. Look at that. Clean as a bell. Three weeks in the bucket. As clean as a bell. That smells bloody lovely. We're ready to transfer this out. In the last clip of that we have this here's on. And the muslin. That goes into the brew. The other end of the hose goes into the bucket. And then we have our primal solution. Bit of a bit of a story, see how clear it's come out now. That's all well dissolved. So I can get rid of that and I can just I just pour that in. Now we can start the transfer. It should flow fairly easily. That's it. Let that run. Um what I will do is I'll take a trial jar, hold it against the edge, and don't let it touch the brew itself. Just just let it collect. 
and I'll leave it. And I set that to the side, far, far too cold for testing at the minute, so I have to let it, just have to let it sit and let it bring it back up to room temperature. It needs to be at 21 where we took the original reading. Right, okay, we're coming very near the end of the transfer. It's took about 10 minutes or so. And at the minute I'm tilting the bucket on its side a wee bit, you know, just to keep it going. You can see the yeast sediment there is starting to appear. Um, Muslim bag's doing a great job about keeping it out of it. Give the brew a bit of a mix. Gentle mix. You don't want to get oxygen into your beer at this stage. Um, it can affect the taste of it. So I'm giving this a very gentle stir. And that's just to make sure that the priming solution is distributed evenly throughout the whole brew. Put the lid back on again. And I can see that up. You see another thing just on the floor. I always put a towel down and that catches any drips that. Which inevitably does always nearly happen. The next stage of the process is getting our bottle three and getting our bottles all sanitized and ready for the actual brew to be bottled. Okay, ready to sanitize our bottles. Um, these bottles were all washed last night, day before, and they're all reusable obviously. So what I do is warm sooty water with just washing up liquid and put them in, give them a bit of a shake and stuff, and then I let them sit. I would do 50 at a time, lay them upside down, and then every bottle is rinsed out. So this is an example, this is a clear one because you can't see the brown, but that's, you know, nice and clean and ready for sanitizing again. I'll show you the clear bottle, what is the, how to sanitize it is, as an example, because you can see, take the bottle upside down, dip it into the, the liquid that sanitizes the outside. Don't need to do outside down here. And then just on, you see the sanitizing solution shoots up the inside. Right, and then shake off the excess, and then take it and you hang that on, you hang that on the bottle entry, and that drains it. Even all the solution collects down here. So I can take it off because I'm doing brown bottles today. Um, so I'm going to continue on. I have 50 of these to do. Okay, as you can see there now that the bottles are all they're on the tray. Bottles up on a crate up a bit higher, just makes it easier for sitting at the table of the bottle. Bottle and wand is already attached. Next up is, and it's a really important stage, is don't forget to sanitize the lids. Crown caps, um, that's in there. So, whenever I just normally dump them in, I need, so there's 50 bottles on the tray, so I need 50 caps. I counted these earlier on, there's about maybe 52 or 53, so I'm just going to fire the whole lot of them in. Bottle and wand's already attached. Just case, swing around and the valve's still closed at this stage. So just case, take the bottle. And the beauty about the bottle and wand is that the brew will run down and it'll sit there. But it takes this by here at the bottom, this be like a, a tip to be pushed up in to release the beer. So if I open the cap, put the bottle in out first just in case. Open the cap, you can see that it'll fill up so far until I push the bottom. And one other thing is to open the top of the bucket very slightly so that it doesn't create a vacuum. And then I can just proceed the filling. You see the wand is nice and full. You see the bottle here at the bottom. It's filling up. Now I will fill the bottle up until the brew hits exactly the neck and stop. So whenever I release that See that stops flowing, but okay, you make it no drip. But and that's that's one bottle done. Okay, beer's all bottled. I've moved the uh, bottle and bucket out of the way, and I've, I've put in this is a this is a bench capper. Caps are still sitting in the sanitizing solution from beforehand, and the beer's all sitting there. Incidentally, I got forty five yeah forty five bottles of beer out of the thing, so it's, it's not bad. I'm happy enough with that. Only only lost about a bottle and a half to the level, so. Um, I can start off then and I will put all the caps on top of each of the bottles and that's them all sitting ready then for, for pressing to get the cap sealed. So I get that done, I'll come back in a sec. Caps on top, caps all on top of the bottles. Um, now at the stage where I'm ready to, to put them through the bench capper. Um, 
I think that's all sanitised up in round here as well. I, it's all been sanitised. So um, set the bottle in the middle. Oop, good start. Back in there again. Give it another bit of a dip. And under there, set it down in so it's nice and straight. Hold the bottle and press nose in. It's good and tight. Click it out. That's um, it's as simple as that. And repeat just until you get the whole lot done. So I'll cap the bottles and back in a minute. Okay, 45 bottles on a uh, capped and sealed. I'm going to put them into the crates and then transfer them back out to the fermentation chamber where they'll sit for a, another three weeks or so at the same temperature as they were fermented at. So the temperature has been raised up to 21 degrees again so that these will carbonate properly and it's at the same consistent temperature throughout. The temperature's raised up there, right? It's up to about 16 and a half degrees inside the fridge. Um, I'm going to put the, the beer in now. As, as before, I'm just I'm going to tip the probe onto the side, side of the bottle. That'll ensure a, a consistent temperature. So that's going to rise to 21. And I'll come back in a couple of weeks and we will be moving it out then. By that stage, it'll be nicely carbonated. Right. And it'll be stored for maybe another two weeks or so at just normal standard room temperature in, in my garage. Um, so you're talking about 13, 14, 15, 16 degrees, give or take. And let it condition for, for a couple of weeks before it be ready for drinking. So you're still talking about 3-4 weeks. Right, one other important job through is let's work out what our ABV is. Um, I'm going to take the temperature off the trial jar. I need it to be about 20 degrees or thereabouts. So 19.4, 19.5. It's near enough. Um, so we'll take the hydrometer. And it's going to overspill this. So I'm going to just pop that in there. Let that run off. Right, and let's take it over here and drop it down in, give it a bit of a spin. And Tiny gravity, 10 10. So um, we'll work out now what the, the ABV is. Okay, I'm just working out the final gravity here. We started at 104.6 and we finished at 1010. So that gives us an ABV of roughly 4.7%, which is, isn't too far off the mark. We're looking for five. So it's, it's not too bad. Considering it's home brewing and stuff, it's not in the exact sense. I'm happy enough for that.